That's going to hit. Or six piercing damage. Take that, you foul beast, etc. Um, it looks like the arrow doesn't do a ton of damage to it, um, but there is an arrow sticking out of it now. Huzzah! Mission accomplished. Uh, Melvin. I ask uh, the, the skeletal body in front of me to show me what you're made of. He bones. Wow. Um, and now you see nothing. <laughs> Why don't you describe how you kill this thing? I like to think that I, uh, I take my axe and from an underhand position I swipe it up separating the rib cage in two so hard that it actually flies open and then wraps around the spine in the opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah, that exact, that's exactly what happens. It looks like you've cracked open a lobster shell. Yes. Um, the, uh, the woman who is hiding runs up to you and says, Oh my goodness, thank you so much for saving me. Uh, and then she says, But this is my ship. And you need to get off now. Um, you're going to need to roll a um, okay. You need to roll a uh, wisdom saving throw. All right. Okay, that's a good save. Uh, this creature has stared at you with this disgusting, uh, grotesque, rotting flesh that, um, hang on a second. This that, intermission brought to you by, uh, a dog, a dog, oh, okay. a dog who figured out how to open the computer room door. Um, yeah, its its flesh is just seeping with seawater, and its hair is covered in uh, seaweed and algae, and its clothing is just uh, nearly disintegrated, and you can see its disgusting naked body beneath its rags. Um, Melvin, and, it's your mother. And it's going to attack you. Uh, Don't actually, talk about hang on. My mother like that. One moment. Uh, gonna move over here. Now, Kronar needs to make a saving throw as well. Why? Because I said yeah. so. A wisdom saving throw, please. Absolutely. I'm wise. Is this the type of spell or ability that casting it so close to me would incur an attack of opportunity? It's the type of uh, spell or ability that's not a spell. Right. Um, wow, that's another great save. Okay, so it's now going just to attack you. You see um, that it has these this long, rotting... Razor sharp claws at the end of its uh, hands, and it's going to uh, like go for your face with it, screaming at you as it does so. Whose face? Melvin. So Melvin. Oh, okay. Where Melvin's face used to be. <laughs> An eleven. Your deception will not gain you any favor in this battle. Okay. Um, that brings us back to. Oops, I destroyed that token. It was 21. Or something absurdly high. Yeah. Alright, the um, undead sailor that Melvin has, not Melvin, Kroner has been dueling with is going to uh, once again attack. Oh, did you guys hear the dog scratching at the door? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yes. really cute. Uh, is it? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It's a puppy. Yeah. It sounds like the zombies are trying to get in. The zombies are trying to get into your face, and then misses again. Zombie cannot. It has a plus five, for God's sakes, to its attack. <laughs> All right, Kronar. I just can't get it. Um, yeah, so, oh, wow, that thing is creepy. Um, what else do I get? Well, I do have another spell slot, but I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to use brute force once again. Okay. So you're attacking with your scimitar? Can I switch, or do it, does it cost me to switch? Uh, what are you trying to do? I just want to switch to a different weapon. What kind of weapon? To a staff. Yep, that shouldn't be, that's not a problem. Excellent. I whip out my 
staff party. <laughs> oh. I'm glad it's not called the staff infection. <laughs> oh, that's even better. Uh, yeah, you uh, you succeed to clobber this thing with your staff party. So much bludgeoning. Yep. Uh, you clonk it on the head, and it's you can kind of see uh, a hairline crack appear in the skull. Ooh. Would you like to can do I double tap else? it? I don't think you can. All right. Just druid problems. All right, Arius. <laughs> Uh, okay, how does the our little boat look uh, that's moored to the side there? It's, you know, kind of going up and down with the waves, but you've tied it in such that it's not, like, smacking against the side of the ship every time a wave hits it. Okay, and how far how far down is it into the boat? About, uh, 10 or 15 feet. But uh, Arius wouldn't get hurt if he, if he climbed on down into the boat. <laughs> no, not if you do it carefully. All right. Well, he, uh, well, he'll, uh, he'll... As he as he starts to climb over the edge mm -hmm. of the of the boat he's on currently into his uh, safety hole, yep. he will uh, call out uh, to the uh, creature. He'll say, "Oh my God, you're as ugly as Melvin's mother!" and cast vicious mockery at it. Okay. Um, Stop talking about my mother. That needs me. Wasn't it's sure. thirteen? Yeah. It fails. Pretty sure fails. Does. In fact. Okay, so it takes four uh, psychic damage, and it, has dis it has disadvantage on its next attack. And uh, as Arius uh, descends down as a bonus action, he's going to uh, yell out to his dear, dear friend Melvin. Uh, he's going to cast Healing Word as a second level spell. Okay. Uh, he'll say, sorry about uh, making fun of your your... Hideous mother, Mel. Uh, but uh, oh, I know you got this. You can do it, dear friend. And he also has to add an extra 1d4 onto that. Arius so gives nine. a big thumb up. <laughs> yeah, as, he, as Arius dips on down, he heals Melvin for nine hit points and is now cowering uh, in a little boat. There you go. So add those nine hit points on if you haven't already. And Melvin, you're up. I am conflicted. <laughs> on one hand, you have dishonored my mother, for which you deserve no less than death. On the other hand, you've perhaps brought us tactical victory. I will have to mull over the consequences <laughs> later. <laughs> so I will attack with my great axe. Okay. <laughs> which is the thing I like to do. I've noticed. Attack who? That's a damn fine attack. Um, this hideous creature kind of puts its hands up to shield itself. And your uh, great axe goes uh, sliding down its hands into its arm, uh, cutting a fairly deep gash. Take note, this is how you face an enemy, not by cowering in corners and through deceptions. Um, he says... Doesn't say shit. Can't do that. Um, she screeches in anger at what you have said to it, and attacks you with its claws again. 17! Doesn't hit. It has disadvantage anyway, so... Yeah. She's, um... going to go rushing off... Actually, no, she's not. She's gonna stay, stay with you. Actually, no. She's gonna go rushing off, uh... this way. Sometimes she uses her action to spin in circles. She's going to run off, so you can take an attack of opportunity against her. Hiya! Uh, that doesn't hit. She manages to slink, slink under your axe before escaping. A wise stratagem to run from a foe you cannot beat, but I will still pursue you! Meanwhile, the undead soldier attacking Cronar continues to do so with me mechanical inaccuracy. <laughs> 13? Nope. He goes... <laughs> he seems very upset with himself. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit, uh, yeah. Why don't you show him how it's done? Ooh, it's my turn. So this time, I'm going to two-hand my staff party. Okay. It's a quarter staff, so it's going to go like this. This is cold. What? It's cold. What's cold? Um, it's, only, it's only a quarter staff now. 
Um, okay, uh, yeah, that that's going to miss, unfortunately. You guys are taking turns missing each other. <laughs> is there, like... It's a very pleasant, cool breeze in between you. That's nice. Arius. I said to Kronar, your moonbeam was doing no effect here. Better put it somewhere strategic to bring down our foes. Can I move it? Can you move it? 60 feet on a bonus. Oh, well, I'm still using a bonus, aren't I? While I was missing the oh. air, it was really just a um, a ruse so that I could. I'm actually I'm mistaken. It's actually an action to move it. Maybe in your next turn. Okay, Arius will uh, peek his head up over the edge of the boat, hoping that things have uh, have have quieted down. I have bad and... news, Arius. You're gonna need to roll a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> All right. Uh, I didn't realize I can move it. Hmm. Oh boy. Okay, uh, you feel compelled to get as far, as far away from this creature as you can. Oh shoot. Okay, in is fact, that going to? In fact, you must. Okay. Is is he is he enable able to uh, uh, use um, the, use the boat to get away? I will allow or you to untie he... the boat and get away. Yep. Then that's what he's going to do. Okay, uh, Arius uh, begins to untie the boat. Uh, he doesn't seem to be in control of himself, yeah. but he is definitely untying the boat, and he's beginning to drift away. Melvin, <laughs> what the hell are you going to do? <laughs> <sighs> By the way, the lamp, I assume, is still either with Arius or on the boat. Arius is, yeah, he's the lamp keeper holder. Yep. Hopefully. <sighs> oh, this is so good because to Melvin it looks like you're just fucking pissing <laughs> off. <laughs> you're like, peace, guys. Good luck with this fight. All right, hold on. I need to figure out what Melvin would do. WWMD. I'm dying to know. Because no matter what you say, it's going to be hilarious. And if anyone is uh, watching the stream for the first time and feels compelled to subscribe so you can watch more fun uh, moments like this of... Yeah, watch uh, watch Arius hide and run again. Yeah, watching uh, party members being He's, abandoned at sea. He, he right. doesn't always have to be compelled in order to do this. Yeah. And then watch other party members judge distances. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's all get our measuring tapes out, guys. <laughs> I'm going to say... Uh, to Arius. Arius, there better be a damn fine tactical reason as to why you are departing with our ship. And then I will move over to the Sea Hag. <laughs> okay. Hey, wait. What? Who says it's a Sea Hag? No, I'm just, I'm calling her a Sea Hag because I don't have other, any other name for her. Right, I mean, it could be anything. Is yeah. that the girl that was a girl and is now a Sea Hag? Yeah, but it, you don't know it's a Sea Hag. It could be in anything. I'm calling her Sea Hag because she's a lady and she's undead. Well, she's if you want to give us a better she, name she, she for her. She is not undead. She's sea not line. undead. No. Sea Lion. Sea Lion. Sea Lion. Sea That is a crit. Crit. Critical hit. Uh, that's a critical, critical hit. Critical hit. Right. Sound, sound the klaxon. And you're How you like the shit? That that uh, additional crit damage, by the way, is also pretty damn incredible. All right. So hold, hold, uh, ooh, mm. Okay, so that's actually a little bit wrong. Okay. Uh, since you can see one of the damage rolls on that critical hit was a, a critical one. Oh, no. So I'm going to add the actual second roll to that. All right. Too bad you can't show those separately in this macro. Yeah. Okay, so it's actually a 16 instead of an 11. So 16 plus 16, there's a 32 damage on that hit. Holy shit, that's a good hit. But... Melvin's mad about something. Um, yeah, so your axe goes splitting through this creature. Um, instead of red blood, this extremely liquidy, blackish-green blood comes, like, seeping out of, of her, but... 
she somehow manages to hold her feet, but barely. Don't get it in your mouth. Now, before I move on to a different player's turn, would you like to, to add anything else onto that damage? Uh... No, I'm going to keep it like that. All right. Um, the creature curses uh, you in a language you don't understand. Curses at you, rather. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Probably that French we're hearing so much about. <laughs> yeah. And goes diving off the side of the ship. You get an attack of opportunity as she jumps off. Your cowardice will fail you. And her corpse goes splashing into the cold water. <laughs> Sink to the bottom sea, bitch. And it reinvigorates her and she comes back. Okay. Meanwhile, Arius is uh, drifting away, but isn't for some reason no long doesn't know what he was fleeing from anymore. Oh, God! All right. Um, this undead soldier... Still slack shot and still um, not realizing he's holding his scimitar from the blade and not the handle is going to attack uh, Kronar again. And he just seems puzzled at this point. He's like holding the blade up to his face and trying to like figure out why it's not working. How do I sword? How do I? You he know sees, what? sees the word nerf written along the side of it. You see, you see him struggling to try and figure this out, and then he just dies because he's good for nothing else. He just dies? He just I just killed him. Oh shame. I, I, I want now, I want you to know he didn't mysteriously die. <laughs> this is straight up GM intervention. <laughs> DM smite. Fuck that sailor. The the crack in his head opened wide and he just Yeah, like yeah, suddenly the, the hairline crack turns into a deeper crack and more hairline cracks split out from that. And then like sand in an hourglass, the inside just starts caving in and melting away to nothing. Hmm. So he's also dead. Uh, you guys are no longer an issue. Also, fuck that sailor. <laughs> that was such a good accent. Can you imagine how badly it could have gone? I was so <laughs> looking forward to the whole next session being you guys trying to figure out how to get back to, s to land. Wait, well, I mean, is Arius untied? He is untied, but he is not very far from the ship. Well, does he have the ability... Yeah, he's, he, his, his faculties are back... Uh, no, but does yeah. he have the strength and or navigational skills to both make it back to the ship and tie on? Well, he's he's as soon as Arius snaps to, he's going to start chucking some of the ropes. Throw the rope? Uh, from the boat. Well, he's, he's throwing every rope he can find. I mean, you're not throwing the entire rope, but just launching <laughs> coils of rope onto <laughs> the, the there, boat. There's a lot of rope in that boat, too. Do we grab the rope? I don't know. Do you grab the rope? What kind of check do we need to make? I'm going to not make you guys check for this at all. All right, okay. so totally grab the rope. We, we just roll ones. You make us yeah. do it, we roll ones, and Arius just drifts off into yeah. the ocean. <laughs> well, that was a good campaign, everyone. <laughs> I think we can make pull this one seaworthy again. Pull me back! Oh, please! I will uh, grab Arius and uh, single-handedly lift him back onto the boat. Yep. Okay, Arius yep. is going to hug Melvin. Oh, thank you. Oh, it was, oh, it was, it was so scary. What? With Nuts. Did you have a lapse in your courage? Uh, no, that horrible uh, water witch. She used her s secret gaze on me and scared me so very much. And the next thing I know, I'm floating away from you. I'll never leave you again. <laughs> and he, he's clinging to Melvin as much as he can. This human is just like latched onto you. Disgusting. Let's just do that. <laughs> He's inside you now. Well, hang on. <laughs> There's no better way to latch on. <laughs> so is there um, a lower deck that's not flooded? Is there a hold? Yeah, through the lattice here you can kind of see a lower deck. Alright, is it flooded? There's water there, for sure, but it's not flooded. Alright, can it seems I like wait? like the uh, boat is resting on the rocks. Excellent. I'm going to wait on down in there. Alright. You, Let us uh, search for the weapon that shall bring us victory in a yeah, war I think, against I the think that Undead woman was the weapon. 
but we, we, we killed her, and that's okay. She and wasn't Arius, like Arius is not going to look for any weapon, but he will look around uh, on the bodies and anywhere else for anything valuable okay. that he wants. Why don't yeah, you... so I'm pretty sure that woman was, was the weapon, and she was being confined, but they, they didn't contain her, and the boat crashed, and bad things. For but we're record, still going to go look around anyway. For the record, she wasn't undead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, she was the weapon. So everyone roll an uh, investigation check. This boat is empty. There's nothing on it at all. Mm-hmm. All right. Arius, you will find... Mice? Rats. 14 silver pieces amongst the uh, possessions of the soldiers who are dead. Okay. As he picks that up, he says, There's nothing here! They have nothing! Um, correct. Uh, Kronar and Melvin, you both go beneath the deck of the ship and uh, wade into what is like a storage area, and there's a sleeping area for the sailors. There's some uh, scattered remains of, of dead soldiers down here as well, who uh, appear to have rotted away too much in the water to ever have um, risen. Hmm. And uh, Melvin, you managed to find the what looks like the captain's uh, room. Mm-hmm. And amongst his possessions, you find a, uh, a a scroll tube similar to the one you found on Gibraltar. Mm. In addition to that, you will find... That's a terrible roll. Okay, you find 39 gold pieces, 36... And by the way, that's a 1d200, which I typed by accident, and you still only got a 39. So Thank you for that. 39 gold pieces, 36 silver pieces, 30 copper pieces, and you find uh, an intricate uh, statue of a busty uh, woman. Like intricate a, statue of a busty woman. Yep. Uh, can you tell me the size of the statue? It's about Is the it size of your wrist. Like the length of your wrist. Excellent. Um, would what we found uh, constitute in any way the secret shipment that the uh, the Council of Three have been waiting from this boat? Um, or is there something else, like a crate full yeah, of something? You rolled uh, a crit on your investigation check. Um, you found uh, nothing else that you think could constitute what they are looking for. When you went to the captain's room, the scroll mm-hmm. was glowing slightly. Okay. And that's in the way that um, an item of importance might glow in an RPG video game and yep. not magical. Like a beam of sunlight was coming in through a couple cracks in the wood and it was landing right on it? Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. Hmm. It said, and, and on the outside of the scroll tube, it says plot device. Yeah. Very interesting. Is there a, a captain's log that I could find in the captain's room? Sure, yeah, you, okay. find, the, you find the ship manifest. Or like a okay. Maltese Falcon? Pardon me? Is there a Maltese Falcon? <laughs> no, there's no Maltese Falcon. In that case, I'd like to, uh, to get uh, all the findings and bring them back up to the top of the deck and gather. Uh, you need to roll a uh, climb stair check as you climb up. A climb stair check. Uh, what would that be? That's a 1, E2. What's he looking to beat here? He's looking to beat a 0. Oh, crit. Nice. Yeah, you climb the stairs. Awesome. So I'm still looking around, too. Yeah. Um, between Between the two of you, you feel like you've cleaned out the basement area there. Oh, that's an accomplishment. That usually takes a whole long weekend. <laughs> yeah. You have so much room for activities down there now. <laughs> We're going to practice our jujitsu. Um, actually, investigating the... Uh, Kronar. Not Kronar. Yeah, Kronar. Um, in your investigations, you notice that it appears like the ship is also 
been burnt. Um, and you'll recall that there's there was it looks like there's a like an enormous fire on the ship, but surprisingly, it doesn't seem to have like eaten away at the wood terribly, if that makes any sense. Mm. And you recall hearing no um, no talks in the town about a fire being on the ship when it crashed. Must be some sort of liquid fire. Where where is the um, on the boat? Where is this fire impact? Yeah, so you see it like how the boat, the wood on the boat, kind of has that those like lightning bolt marks on it. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's supposed to represent. So it was on top of the deck. Yep. Are there any glass vials? But you, you you see this on the inside of the ship too. Inside of the ship too. Yep. You you, Can... you see no glass vials. So if I kick my feet around, I won't hear any little glass vials. No. Nope. Does this does the like the pattern? Does it seem similar to the marks that were left on the old lighthouse after it was set on fire? It does not. Do the rocks around us show any signs of these scorchings? Yes. They do. Yes. Is there any type of sense that there might be a direction? to these damage to the deck. Like it might have come from somewhere off of the boat. Why don't you roll another investigation check for me? I bet that squid let us out here. Actually, you know, you know what, Gabe? You crit. Um, it seems to come from... It's hard to tell because it's covering a lot of the deck, but if you had to make a guess, it looks like it came from land. Came from land? Yeah, it looks like... Um, like the way that the the scorch patterns are 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 pointing, mm -hmm. it looks like it's heavily 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 favoring um, heavily. Take your time. Heavily favoring, uh, a sp like it's not behind. Like the, like the trajectory of like yeah, uh, it looks like some, something there's, 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 trebuchet. No, there's no scorch behind some of the boxes, for example, as if something mm -hmm. was blocking its path. And As if the boxes is were, black, the, were blocking its path. Does it look like the direction of the flames came from the direction of the lighthouse? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say, but it's definitely possible. As if right. they built a lighthouse that's actually a giant laser beam. I'd like to, to communicate to the group. My word, I do say, I believe that the... Uh, occasion that happened to wreck this vessel uh, came from outside of the sea, from the land itself, seemed to have propelled this deck into a flamey abyss. I believe we are looking at sabotage from afar. Oh my god, it's a barrage. I'm telling all y'all, it's sabotage. That came out a little bit Christopher walken -y, which was, it worked really well for it. <laughs> also, I'm happy to uh, share the spoils from my found from the deck, which uh, translates to 13 gold and 12 silver and 10 copper for everyone. Excellent. <laughs> you are so honorable. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a crow comes flopping up, or flopping up from the, the boat and says, What about Kirby share? Well, if Kirby had come, I would have divided it evenly. As of yet, Kirby must yet prove himself on the battlefield. The crow starts pecking at the rope holding the boat. It's clearly and doing then, no damage. And Kirby takes this opportunity to move her moonbeam from. <laughs> yeah, the crow is clearly doing no damage to the rope. <laughs> uh, let's take a peek at the captain's log to see if it uh, sheds any light into what might be so important to be carried from Opus to the harbor. Of interest, um, uh, you see, uh, of interest are the names of some of the people on the ship. And most of them appear to have different military rankings. Um, what is most interesting is that there is a High Knight listed amongst the names. Does this High Knight have a name? Or shall we call it High Knight Gregory? Um, actually, good question. I might have written that down. Gregory? And is he high like JT, or is he like... I like... I'm high. I'm pretty high. Uh, let's call them Gregory. Oh my god! Ares is gonna grab the manifest. 
and start going over the list of names. Where did we get a manifest from? Is Gregory an important name? Because maybe I shouldn't write Gregory then. It's not an important name to me. Okay, Gregory. <laughs> yeah, Arius is very interested in this in this list. Also, Arius, I found this statue of a intricate, busty woman. I know how you like tawdry things. Perhaps you would like to <laughs> hold on to this. Uh, Arius Unless, will Unless, of course, give it... Cronar, you like such totems. <laughs> She does look strong. Arius, does it look familiar to Arius at all? Roll, um, why don't you roll an intelligence check? Or a history check? Or a history check. But, uh, yeah, roll a history check or an intelligence check. Okay. I don't care. I don't care which. Um, it is the figure of a, um, fertility goddess. Uh, it's not one of the the main deities in the pantheon. It's kind of a long forgotten goddess, actually. Um, but of particular interest to you is the value of such an historical item, which you estimate at approximately 250. Uh, okay. Oh, oh my gosh. I think this might, uh, yes, this looks like uh, something I used to have as a child. I, I would love, dearly love to keep it close to my heart. There you are. I'll hand over the, uh, the busty lady. Okay. I really appreciate that you guys roleplayed that. And uh, I think perhaps the most important spearhead to our campaign might be in the scroll tube from the captain's room. Hopefully it's not ciphered like the last. It did, is you say, did you say scroll tube or scrotum? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got the emblem of the blue peacocks on it, so as far as I'm concerned, they're one and the same. Hot diggity dog. Nice zing. <laughs> so I'll open up the tube. Yeah. And inside is... Inside is a ciphered message. Luckily, we have the other message that was deciphered. Uh, you still have it? Yeah. Okay. Um, then uh, if someone wants to make an intelligence check with advantage to uh, put it together, they can. Yeah, I can totally read this. Um, Does anyone else think they can do better than me? I'm a genius. How do I add advantage to this? Uh, you just just roll an intelligence check twice. Oh, you know, you, sorry, you had it right. Um, you did it the first time. When you If you hit a button, it'll roll twice. So the 18 is your oh. first one. The 10 is your second roll. Oh. So we'll take the 18, uh, which is enough for you to decipher uh, a good chunk of the message. And um, it says that... This boat was sending um, a N Knight Commander Gregory to replace uh, the, tempor the temporary Knight Commander Hit Steals, who is the interim replacement of um, Maurice Pound. Mo Pound? Mo Pound. I guess he didn't make it to his commission. There goes his career. Is there is there any like uh, any of the bodies anything wearing anything that would resemble the uh, the, the outfit of a uh, someone benefiting uh, this high knight's position? You 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 perhaps notice uh, if you went to the bot if you went to the lower deck one of the uh, the corpses that's kind of submerged beneath the water is wearing. Uh, Perhaps has like pauldrons on his uniform, indicating a higher station. Can we haul him up? Let's haul him up. Haul him up. Haul him up. The yeah. whole thing, or, or just the, or you, or just the, anything to like. You guys bring in the, this body back with us. We just got in trouble for dragging a corpse around. <laughs> well, maybe we should take his pauldrons and pips or um, chevrons or. I'm, I'm more interested to see if he's got a, a weapon that would be interesting. Like a magical weapon, or a glove, or there... just you know something that could be that could commemorate this battle on the ship. I see what you're saying. Um, his his uniform is has the same uh, burn pattern on it as the rest of the ship. Mm -hmm. Um, but he he's not carrying any weapon that's like special compared to the rest of the soldiers on the ship. Nothing trophy worthy, essentially. No, no other than his uniform, no. 
Well, if you put his head on his scimitar, that's special. What say you? Do we have the weapon we need to take down the crooked order? I I think Gregory was the weapon. Well, we have the proof on the scroll that uh, Kid Steel's been been ousted. So I'd it, say we go back. We uh, we can hopefully get back before anyone notices we're gone. Hopefully that trial's still underway. Orwin certainly doesn't know how to shut up. So if we get back, we can run in to interrupt the trial and say, uh, Your Honor, we have new evidence and uh, bring forward the the ciphered scroll and give Kit Steel the boot. Well, you must think I'm of the counteroffensive that... Kid Steel could pose. He could say that this document is a forgery. So what do we have to prove its legitimacy? The seal on the scroll. That we have broken. Why do you only do that for? <laughs> Beautiful. Well, we've also got uh, uh, the body of a man who outranks him. Why else would uh, a higher-ranking blue peacock be sent here? Are we gonna weekend at Bernie's? This <laughs> we've got the bo we've got uh, what's left of Mo Pound to testify. We've got we've got some evidence. It's better than nothing. Even I think even Kirby would agree that this is enough. Mm. And, I look to the crow. <laughs> what say you, bird? Bring it to Kirby. Kirby wants to see. We told you what it says. What, what does Kirby say? Bring it to Kirby. I think we've ravaged this ship enough. We've become glorious victors in this fight. And we must see what the Justicar thinks. Whether he can pass judgment before the town folk do. I sure wish we had the body of that uh, sea wench. Um, do you want to roll an, Do you want to roll a... Um... A nature check for me, uh, Bernard? Sure do. I love checking nature. Communing with nature. Answering the call of nature. Um, okay. You, um, your knowledge of, uh, of wildlife and the fae make you think that the creature that was on the ship, um, may just have, uh, come across it and decided to use it as a, a layer for a while. Hmm. It may not have been. In fact, you you don't think it had anything to do with the uh, the undead creature. Excellent. I uh, well, I shared this news with uh, with my pals. Well, we could bring back like another undead head to show them that uh, we did in fact fight the undead on the open seas. Did we find the ship's manifest? Yep, that's where you found all the military names. Okay, so including the name of one Gregory who you now believe was going to be the new Knight Commander. All right, let's, let's uh, attempt to bring that to Kirby. Yes? Yeah, we Sounds will. great. All right. right. Last one on the boat is uh, going to be stranded here. And <laughs> Arius will scamper back on. All right. Um, so the party will make its way back to shore, and then we'll pick that up next week. Da -da 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 -da. So until Stroke. next week... Stroke! Keep on blundering.